I'm Dr. Swanee Jett, and I've had a passion for public health for over 30 years. Now I'm in a position to affect change. And these are the critical conversations about health and our community with people who can help me make those changes. Good morning. Welcome to CEO of Live Talks. I'm your host, Dr. Swanee Jett. And today we're going to have an intriguing conversation about AMPT. And I have my guest on the set. Welcome to the set, Mr. Dave Christopher. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hey, so, you know, Inquire Minds want to know, you know, you came from Gary. Yep. Um, GI till I die. I, I know what it <laughs> looked like now. Yeah. Uh, but tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, you know, from the beginning? From the beginning. From the beginning, I, man. I want to know from Gary, the beginning. Grew, grew up in Gary, Indiana. It's like a GI till I die. But, um. Gary, West, the west side of Gary, went to Gary West Side High School, grew up in Concord Commons, Village CCV, um, as, as we call it back then, um, to parents uh, that were disabled. Like, they, but, but my father, my mother had undiagnosed Parkinson's when I was a kid, oh, wow. spent a lot of time in bed. We didn't know what it was because, you know, poor health care is what it is. Uh, my father was 48 years old when I was born, had uh, stomach cancer, diabetes, and a bad back surgery that caused him to walk bent over. Um, and uh, I'm the youngest of uh, five boys, three girls. Now, now, first of all, let's back up. Yeah. <laughs> five boys and three girls. That was a rough household. It's a lot of, yeah. Well, I, slept, <laughs> I slept head to toe in a twin bed with my brother. My mother's a year, a year older than me. That's how we rolled, yeah. And so where were you at in the pecking order? Were you at the, the middle or the end? I was at the very end. I was, I'm the youngest. Okay. So I'm you're the, the youngest. Yeah. So you got the crumbs on the table. You know what's interesting? You say that. Actually, no. Um, uh, I, I did for the most part, but like you would think in most families where the, the baby gets treated as the baby. Right. Yeah, that didn't. That wasn't like that. Oh. And, and it was because it, it was, uh, I, that's not how I ever wanted it. Like, okay. I, I, t I tell the story a lot of times. Like um, when I, I had my first my first birthday party, that was my birthday party as an adult, because my bir my brother's birthday and my birthday were close together. So right. his was in March, mine was in April. And so we couldn't do both. So we, we had to decide who, well, what we were going to do. And so it was usually because his was first and then we usually do his birthday. And then after that, you know, we just say happy birthday on my day. And, you know, I mean, it was, and, and it was interesting. Like, it, it was cool, though. Yeah. 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 So That would have been rough for me. It was, yeah. <laughs> man, I, man, I'm telling you, my parents, my parents um, did a really great job of getting us to understand the stuff that we, this, all those things. Like, sure. you know, if, if, if they were really good, really good about like if Christmas, if we were getting them, they were going to get anything for Christmas, they would let us know. They would tell us. So we, so we didn't have expectations okay. like anything for that Christmas. And if, if January came around, they could get something, they got something. But I think their, their level headedness and, and, um, and their willingness to let us be a part of what was going on, if the lights were going to be turned off, you know, make sure you iron what you need to iron. But they were really, so it was never any. Um, they communicated very yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, like it was crazy how we just. And so, like when I tell stories like that, people go, "Oh, I was like, no, I don't remember it being sad." It was right. like because you because I, I understood. I I knew mm -hmm. that they taught me how to control my environment. So if, I, if the lights were going out, then I knew I needed to do this. If water was going to be turned off, I knew I needed to fill the bathtub up. You know, what I mean? like, mm -hmm. and I grew up like that, always seeking the knowledge to know how to deal with the situation and never panicking about anything. All right. So let's move forward. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the years growing up. Oh, man. And then <laughs> a little bit about high school, because I, I, I just couldn't imagine, you know, seven <laughs> siblings. Remember, I, I had two and yeah. I was the oldest, so I couldn't imagine. That wasn't, that wasn't even the biggest part. So like, I, like our family, until this day, man, we're just like that. We were always we were never like that, you know, that that um, that, that, that no, sibling vibe. Like it was never that. Our situations were like what was around us, you know, the, the, the gun violence and the because we lived in the projects. We lived in Concord Village. So like there were other projects like Terrytown and, and, um, and Dor Miller and Ivanhoe and like all these other, you know, uh, projects that like were competing. Like they had the gangs and stuff. So that was our that was the thing we, that we really had to deal with. So what, they, what gangs were there? Um, OK, I want to say, you know, but there was the each 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 neighborhood, each mm -hmm. project had their own. 
And so I, I, I just assumed, like, Black Gang's Disciple, um, Ill Rookins, the Farmers, um, the, the Vice Lords, the, that, those were the main ones I knew. Mm -hmm. I knew it was Latin Kings, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, MS-13 came later, but mm -hmm. I was trying to figure out, so the audience, audience would know, the projects is in a comparison to Chicago and Cabrini mm -hmm. Green and you know. It was the same stuff. I just won't speak on that. But okay. I mean, it was it was the same. It was the it was the right. same. It was the same thing. It was okay. those those same those same folks. You know what I'm saying like, right. but you know, that's not something I speak on. But um, right. but yeah. So I mean, you had and you just had that. And so like you you had the space that you were safest in. Right. And then they had the space they were safest in. Mm -hmm. What you know, I want to put in context the environment. So it wasn't an easy environment. Oh, nah, by no means. To to grow up in. Nah. Um, but but it was was interesting. Like I said, going back to my parents, like. It, it wasn't. It was like that. You know, you, like the, the example. Like another example. My mother and father being really calm about stuff is when shooting started. They would like holler in the room, get on the floor. Okay. But not like in a panicky way. It was like get on the floor, and when the shooting stopped, you can get off the floor. Right. You you didn't come. Like I couldn't play football in high school when it got to where it got dark before a certain time because I'd be coming home in the dark and I had to walk. I had to, the school. The way I went to West Side High School. And the school was close to Ivanhoe, not Ivanhoe, but uh, 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 Dor Miller and some other stuff. Like, so I had to go through some other areas mm -hmm. to get to my house. And so the thing was, when you crossed, we lived like right at the, like right at the alley. And so it was 17th Avenue and 18th Avenue. 18th okay. was where Concord started. Mm -hmm. So anybody crossing that alley, you, there, was no, there was no doubt they, they lived in Concord. Okay. And so that got dangerous. As a matter of fact, one night we um, got woke up by the police because the some kids had come from a concert at the high school, they crossed that alley, and three dudes, because they called, they knocked on the back door, was like, hey, we need to search your backyard because we believe there's some people dead or injured in your backyard, and literally was that. Like, it was two, it was a guy under our window that had got shot, another guy was under my parents' window, and another guy was out in the middle of the yard, because as soon as they crossed that alley, uh, fellowship started, like, unloading, right? right? Because you knew that's where people were going. Right. And so, that was probably the, the the toughest thing, but I mean, even that though really didn't. It was like you knew it, and you you know, but you didn't. I mean, it's hard to explain. You knew it, but you weren't weren't in fear of it, like you weren't. Right, right, right. This episode of CEO Live Talks is brought to you by Park National Bank. Pay with confidence. Your Park debit card is the fast, safe, smart way to pay this holiday season. Get more details online at parknationalbank.com. If you or someone you love is considering therapy, contact the professionals at Park Duval Community Health Centers today. My Park Duval Community Health Center is right here. Communities in our name. My Park Duval Community Health Center is right here. You're always on time. Because we serve the community. My Park Duval Community Health Center is right here. Park Duval Community Health Center, providing quality health care, one person, one family, one neighborhood at a time. My Park Duval Community Health Center is right here for them. Park Duval Community Health is right here for your children's primary care. At Park Duval Community Health Center, our team of highly dedicated pediatric physicians administer state-of-the-art care right here, every day. Because serving the community is more than part of our name, it's our mission. Park Duval Community Health Center, providing quality health care, one person, one family, one neighborhood at a time. At Park Duval, we offer a variety of services for behavioral health needs, such as therapy, medication management, case management, and we also have community health workers. Here at Park Duval Community Health Center, in our behavioral health department, we provide you with the tools to help improve your life and your mental health. If you or someone you know is experiencing thoughts of suicide, please don't hesitate to give the Suicide Prevention Hotline a call. This could save your life or someone else's life.
high school, play sports. No, I, that, I, I did, didn't play. Try one two. One or two could not because you know. Okay. Yeah, but I went into the went into the Air Force, um, uh, and and well, so between, between that and, and and Air Force was you know some other things that I did, you know that that. What made you go into the Air Force? Because uh, I was I was literally told like you gonna go to the air because I was not the I was not the model student dude I okay. mean I you know so so you can do something yeah it was kind <laughs> you, you know it's, out of the house. you hear people it wasn't even my parents it was actually the counselor man because my okay. parents the thing about my my parents like I said they were both uh, disabled so they never actually even went to my schools usually if it's, everybody had to go to school and if anything happened if somebody had to go to school right. it was my sisters. Or somebody like one of my sisters would go, because my brothers at that point was out of, out of school, and my other brother was too young. But, um, but no, I was told by my counselor, you know, when you hear people say that, it's like either go into the military, or you end up dead or in jail. Right. That that she said that to me. Right. Like there was no question. I didn't even know anything about college or how to go to college. Like you know, like you didn't know nothing. I knew nothing about that because that's not what they talked to me about. They were like, this dude ain't finna do nothing. So you you need to go out to the military. Okay. Yeah. So you went to the Air Force. Mm -hmm. um, that didn't go well. That didn't go not well. A, not initially. <laughs> <laughs> not initially, man. <laughs> basic training. I'm trying to fight the drill instructor. Nah, that, that, like, that don't go well. Right you can't fight the drill instructor. Right. In basic training. Off, off the rip. It was crazy. Because I'm oh, like, wow. you know, coming from where I came from, like, don't talk to me you crazy. It, well, you know, that. that <laughs> And people don't understand that. When you <laughs> join the military, people yell and scream, they cuss you out. You can't be doing that. And um, when you come from urban environment, <laughs> from the streets, you can't talk to people crazy. It was <laughs> right. It was so, hilarious, man. <laughs> it was hilarious to me because I just remember thinking, to this dude, what are you, nuts? Like, what are you, why are you raising your voice to me, man? Because <laughs> I thought to myself, I remember like, that, that, like when it happened, I remember thinking to myself, dude, I just go back home. I ain't right. got no problem with that. Right. Right. Like, but you gonna get out of my face? Right, right. <laughs> so I had a problem with that in, in, in coaching when I played football. So I understand. Yeah, was, I wanted to get at a coach one time for yelling at. Probably not a good idea. No, I <laughs> to, I to bunk the coach out. As you can tell, to this day, I still think that's funny, man. I think that's. I think that dude, he had no clue who he's. Like he, right, right. Definitely not. Yeah. Definitely not. So, uh, what was your rank? And, and I, what, did, what did you end up? Uh, so I left the military as a staff sergeant. I should have left as a tech sergeant. But again, okay. I stayed in trouble. Okay. I mean, so like I actually got, um, I got locked up. I got demoted for some stuff, and it, got, it was it was it was a lot. It was right. my, my, it was by grace of God that I got to. Well, I appreciate you serving. Yeah. So, no. So no. I'm, I, still, I, I'm yeah. still in the reserves. Yeah, the okay. Air Force. Yeah. I did. A, I did a couple years in the reserves after I got out, but uh, after I did 11 and a half years total, and okay. like two years in the reserve. But yeah, I took the early out, man, because I kept getting. In tr I mean, that was crazy. I was like, I kept getting in trouble for like, and I and I just not to go too far into this, right, but like, right. I, you know, for, for drinking and driving, for for selling drugs, for right. like getting in fights, like just. I mean. But it's easy to do. That the, one of the things that we don't. And, and we don't get counsel for this. Yeah. When you come from some tough environments, mm -hmm. and now you're trying to transition <laughs> to the regular world, but you know what didn't leave behind, right? Right. All the stuff that you did in those environments. Yeah. Right. So you need that time to, you know, convert, get yourself yeah. away from that. It took me to college, right? Because I was always fighting in college. Yeah. Right. I I probably was reckless, but. If people said something that I did not like, my first initial thought was to punch them in the mouth. Dude, I was bad. <laughs> So that probably wasn't a good idea, but. Yeah, I don't want to get too far in that, man, yeah. but I was bad about, like, just grabbing, grabbing somebody. Yeah, yeah I understand yeah. that. So what, and that, you know, for me, it was, there was an incident that actually told me I need to pump my brakes and go in a different direction. What made you make that transition? Because for everybody that, you know, we have a lot of youth in the street, yeah, right, and they caught up in life and they want to make that transition to the other side. But, you know, I, I don't want to say it's almost like health related, like something has to happen traumatic. Yeah. But something does have to occur in your mind to say, I can't do this no more. Um, I mean, it was a couple of those times. Like, so when 
when I was, when I, because, and then mom, when, when he'll be, I got out of the military and, you know, was selling drugs and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And I, I, I'd got to, um, you know, where I, where I decided, okay, I don't need to be doing this. When I sat with a couple one night when they, when they smoked themselves out, if you know them, mm-hmm. you know, they smoked themselves out. And I'm like looking at these people like, like, and, and I remember going home and thinking, dude, I'm killing people. Like, right. like I'm literally killing people. Right. Like, I can't, I can't keep doing this. And so I, I, you know, went back and forth thinking, okay, I'm going to flush this stuff. I'm flushing. I'm gonna, I'm flushing. And I finally did. <laughs> I caught all kinds of from my people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They was like, yeah. dude, are you nuts? Like, what, what did you do? Yeah. Why and why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, so I, I, that was sort of the beginning the beginning of like like my conscience coming up to the forefront, which I felt like I always had that because I was my father's preacher, my grandfather. Like I always had good family. So so I think when people say like you know your parents this way, no, my parents did the best they could do, and like they they didn't you know as they say they didn't raise me like that. Right. But but it was like that's that's what I knew because you know mm-hmm. so I, that was sort of the beginning of it. But then I then I still couldn't I really couldn't escape it, and so I ended up leaving at the time I was living in Indianapolis, ended up leaving and moving to to, to Atlanta, which was. Again, the, the dumb move, right? right? But but in the best situation. It was no, because I started out good on the good side of town with this young lady, and like everything was good. But I, my my spirit had me seeking out, like you know, and 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 you know, all it takes is to go to the barbershop. Right. And once you're in the barbershop, yeah. you're connected to the community. And so mm-hmm. now I'm that's now I'm in Southwest Atlanta, I'm in Swats, mm-hmm. and I'm right back where mm-hmm. I was. Mm-hmm. And what what I didn't have a handle on because I what I the part that I skipped is like when I was in the military, I got locked up because I got a DUI mm-hmm. and I got locked up. And, and, and I, when I look back at it now, I realize that, and I've been, I'm 20, 21 years clean and sober now. Okay. I realized, thank you. Yeah. I realized that all of those things that I did, cause I started drinking when I was 13, getting high when I was 13. Yeah. And all those things that I did all that time, all the way even through the military, while I was still in the military, doing all the thing, all those things, mm-hmm. I connected them all back to that. Oh, wow. I connect them. Everyone, if I, if I looked at like everything that I did, mm-hmm. like, so when I was in Indianapolis, lost my house, lost my car, divorce, you know, all the stuff, like everything, I tell people, everything you could possibly do wrong, I did it. Everything you can mess up, I messed it up. Mm-hmm. And so then I, then I was like, okay, like, so I'm going to bail, I'm going to, I'm going to get, because some stuff was going down. And and, the, and 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 people starting to tell on people. Right. And I'm like, yeah. okay, I got that I, I, I'm headed. I'm yep. headed. I'm going to Atlanta. I go to Atlanta. I get down there. I'm doing good. I get right back into that same yep. move. I ended up in. Um, I don't know if you re- recently where they talked about the uh, Red Dogs, right? Mm-hmm. Like the young man that got they got yep. um they got killed, right? And look, they they were regularly going past my door, like because I I I had just gotten back into it, and so I'm living in a community where. This is this is the act, this is the daily activity, and I don't know, man. It was like I, I tried to try I kept trying to get out of it, and I remember like so at the time I, I had this divorce and my son was young. He was still like seven or eight or whatever, and we me and his mother had made an agreement that when he turned ten, that I would get custody of him, and I had him with me in Atlanta when he was ten, and I'm like ready to put him in school. She hits me up. Was like, hey, when are you bringing Dave home? Dave Jr. And I was like, um, I'm not, because you know we, we agree. She's like, Nah, if you were closer, maybe, but right like this, like this far away, no. So she came and got him, wow. and and at that point, like when I had him, I had stopped drinking. Okay. And you know, because that was that was I was trying to be a good dad, so I stopped drinking, and she came and got him. I hit I hit rock, rock bottom, bottom. Yeah. rock bottom. I was like, I tell people that's like one of the worst days of my life. But she when she said like if you were closer, then maybe so. I, I just got promoted to senior project manager for the company I was working for. And they asked me, is there anything else you can do? And I said, yeah. I said, you can move me closer. I need to be closer to my son. And they, the, that was the day before. And the next day, because my boss, my boss was actually in Texas, she called me up. and She's like, is Louisville, Kentucky close enough? And I was like, yeah. The depression part, you know, I, I would get up only because I knew I had to. I'm always having to do stuff for other people and I can't like, who's helping me? Therapy has improved my life by 95%. Every parent, every child, just everyone, just in general needs some type of therapy and they should seek it. 
if they feel the need. When I'm approached or have something happen to me, I feel the emotions for everything, but then I just, I have to set it free because it'll do something to me. <laughs> so I just, like I said, I, I feel it, not for long, and then I, call, I set it free. That's how I've been able to cope with my situations. A closed mouth doesn't get fed. <laughs> But yeah, once I, I couldn't take it anymore and I just I reached out for help and I got it. If you or someone you love is considering therapy, contact the professionals at Park Duval Community Health Centers today. If you or someone you love is considering therapy, Contact the professionals at Park Duval Community Health Centers today. My Park Duval Community Health Center is right here. Communities in our name. My Park Duval Community Health Center is right here. You're always on time. Because we serve the community. My Park Duval Community Health Center is right here. Park Duval Community Health Center, providing quality health care, one person, one family, one neighborhood at a time. My Park Duval Community Health Center is right here for them. Park Duval Community Health is right here for your children's primary care. At Park Duval Community Health Center, our team of highly dedicated pediatric physicians administer state-of-the-art care right here, every day. Because serving the community is more than part of our name, it's our mission. Park Duval Community Health Center, providing quality health care, one person, one family, one neighborhood at a time. At Park Duval, we offer a variety of services for behavioral health needs, such as therapy, medication management, case management, and we also have community health workers. Here at Park Duval Community Health Center, in our behavioral health department, we provide you with the tools to help improve your life and your mental health. If you or someone you know is experiencing thoughts of suicide, please don't hesitate to give the Suicide Prevention Hotline a call. This could save your life or someone else's life. spiritual yeah yeah um, absolutely god i trust god faith, for all of it um because to go through what you went through mm -hmm. and survive and doing what you're doing now mm -hmm. um it's a miracle oh for sure right because i tried every i tried to mess up everything <laughs> i mean i, I mean it felt, it felt like i was on a mission doc i mean i was on a right. mission like i was taking some chances risk like with you know selling drugs and doing the stuff i was doing to put the places i put myself in the people I was messing with, the things but I, yeah. I, I often believe um, God uses people like me and you mm -hmm. take us through trials and tribulations so that we do have a story mm -hmm. to tell, um, so that we can relate to people, mm -hmm. so we can educate, you know, and raise kids. Yeah. And not only that, um, build community. So let's transition to AMP and mm -hmm. how this got started. Uh, uh, and you have a fascinating story, so. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, it kind of came out of that same situation with, with my son. So I'm, and, and so Amp didn't, so when I, when I got custody of my son, I'm, I'm like, we were like at the apartment and we're watching this movie and I'm laying on the couch and I'm looking at him watching the movie and I started panicking. I was like, wait a minute, how am I going to do this by myself? Like, what's, like, how do I raise this son? He's 11 year old, this young man. And I asked him, well, what do you want to do for the rest of your life? 
my man said, he told me later, he said, uh, he said, I asked that question because I knew if I didn't, I wouldn't get to watch the rest of that movie. <laughs> <laughs> but what he said was, I want to be a record producer and I want to own my recording, own recording studio. So fast forward, um, I ended up building a recording studio to help a friend out. Because um, I, I tell people, like, I'm uh, referred to as a serial entrepreneur, I, I really enjoy starting businesses. I love, I love the idea of building it, growing it, making it work, be successful, like all that. So I've, I've been able to do that. And I, and I tell people, like, my past taught me that. Like, I, in the things that I did before, even though they weren't, like, the, the legal things, I, still had, I dealt with the same right, stuff. Right, right. Inventory and personnel right. and, and risk assessments. Right. And people all. do not understand how you can make that transition. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or that you, the, 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 by God's grace, I made that. You know what I'm saying? But, but it's business. Yeah, it's business. And so, um, so anyway, so I was trying to say, I'm going to start this. I didn't even know what, what business I was going to do. I was like, okay, I'm going to do something. And I decided to, to do a recording studio. So I, I, I started Level 7 Recording Studio. And I told my guy, I was like, hey, look, um, when we're not using it for, 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 to make money for your program, because all I wanted was like, you keep all the profits, I'll, I'll just run the business and right. I'll you know, keep the money for, to run the business. I want kids to be able to come in and use it, you know, when we're not using it to make money for you. And not long after that, Mayor Fisher had asked for, they, they would have some problems with kids running the streets and being like, you know, doing crazy stuff. And, and, I, and, I, and I say this all the time. I don't believe the kids are bad. I don't. And I'll, you know, people can argue that all day. I think kids are misguided. If right. you don't give them something, something, something uh, positive and, and productive to do, then they'll do what they do because they're kids, right? right. right. They're going to find something to do. I, I firmly believe You got to give them some direction. But... So anyway, I saw. So anyway, Bear Fisher wanted to come up with some programs, and I, the name Amp popped in my head, I, and I literally in three days, I came up with the name Academy of Music Production Education and Development. I went home. I was I was actually guarding for my sister at the time. She had had a stroke, and I was driving to Indianapolis. Came up with the name. I came back home that night because I do graphic design. I designed the logo. The next day, I built the website because I do right. website design. Right. And on, on Friday, on that Friday, it was a Wednesday, Thursday, and now on Friday, I called the IS and got a tax ID. Okay. Ordered banners, all this stuff for the Festival of Faith where we were going to launch this thing that I, that I had no idea what it was, right? This, this music program. And I really honestly did not expect kids to, to you know, jump in. Right. We had a line of kids at this table trying to sign up for a camp that did not exist. <laughs> well, well, first of all, they have never heard of that in the West End, period. Right. 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 No, because so it, was, it was on paper. It, it was, was, yeah, right. right. It was on paper. You had never heard of it, but like based on what you, like we had brochures and all that. I, I mean, I had, in my mind, I had it built. Right. Because like I said, I love starting businesses. Right. So, so the one thing I can say for me is that anytime I, and I think it's a blessing the guy gave me is like, and I tell people it's not always the case for every business I see or every idea that somebody tells me, but I've been blessed to be able to see beyond where it is now. Mm -hmm. Like like in my mind, I can see your business yeah. five, ten years from now. Like I literally can like see all the things that are, that it, that is happening. Mm -hmm. And and that's what I did with every business I've had is that I was able to see what I wanted to do. So that so when I showed up, it looked like it had been around for a long time. If you go to the website, you're gonna find a website. If you go ask a card, I got the cards, I got brochures, I got all that. Sign these kids up. The very first summer first camp we had, uh, the preservation hall jazz band shows up. They came in town for a concert, mm -hmm. found out about what we were doing, and drove their bus to the building, did a second line into the building, right? The second camp we did, because the kids were like, can we do this again? Like, right. of course, we did a second camp. Janelle Monet in Wonderland show up for the second camp. Wow. And we literally been friends with them since then. Like, I, I like to tell this story just recently. You know, she just came out with the movie Glass Onion. Right. And we actually saw the movie just recently with her. <laughs> 